Hello everyone. Today I am going to talk about the collectibles market or you can say that premium toys that are based on various movies, games or personal IP. So I am going to tell you a lot of theories that may help you to grow as an artist in the collectible industry. So right now you are thinking that I want to make a statue for the collectibles market. So why would I care about the theory? But I insist that theory is a very essential part for an artist to grow as an artist. So you are going to work in the collectibles market. You should be always well aware of the market and the how things work in that particular market. There is a big industry that has been growing more and more every year. As more and more people start buying these statues and many artists getting job in this collectible industry. The 3D desktop printer also revolutionized the market as it became very easy to develop a digital concept art in the physical product these days as compared to 10 to 20 years back. There are many iconic characters that are very popular among the people and people have an emotional attachment to those characters. They are so attached to them they want to have a physical product or statue of uh, their favorite characters in their home and they are willing to spend a lot of money on these things as a hobby or as a passion. There are millions of people from different countries who develop as a hobby to collect these statues. These all started many years ago with simple figures which are of star bars. For those who want to know more about it, I would recommend an awesome documentary available on Netflix called The Toys That Made Us. And from that point onward, the quality of those toys and the craze of those toys uh, increased rapidly. Today, you can see highly detailed and highly painted statue that cost thousands of dollars, but people start buying and keep buying them out of craze and have an amazing and huge collection of these statues. Some people built huge museum of their collections as well as you see here. But you must wonder why these statues are so expensive. So it is not only the production price of these statues that may count but companies have spent a lot of money to get franchise of these characters as well. For example, I run a company known as Omega Head Studio and I want to make a Batman statue so I can sell, sell to customers in India and abroad also. For that, I want to buy copyright from DC and have DC comic authorization to sell it to the public. But it cost me a thousands of dollars so I don't do that. The other factors that makes collectibles expensive is scarcity of that model. For example, you see a simple toy that had millions of copies available in the market around the world. But in the case of collectibles, it is limited to a small batch of around 1000 pieces or it may go to 30 pieces only. This is called addition size. For example, this Venom figure is limited to only 30 copies that are to be sold in the market and it has been sold for around $1200. You can also know about the addition size and unit number and much more at the base of the model. As most companies provide information about the statue like serial numbers sculpted by which artist, painted by which artist and where the model is produced. Imagine, in a world, there are billions of people around the world and you have only 1000 copies to be sold. So this exclusiveness makes it more expensive. Sometimes companies make it, make it more exclusive by making two versions of it. A regular version and a deluxe version. So, what is the difference between them? The difference between them is 
that the exclusive version sometimes comes with a detailed paint job or extra switch out. So you can set, change their hands, legs, hair size weapons. Some people also buy more than one copy if they think this statue is good enough and people will buy at a greater value than the original price to make some profit by selling through the eBay, Facebook and Instagram also. But sometimes small companies like mine produce unlicensed product also. For example, I set up a home based studio where I make 10 Batman statue and sell them to the clients. It will be very unlikely DC will sue me because these companies don't bother till I make millions of profit. So you can say that there are two types of market going around the world. One is licensed like Prime One Studios, Light Show Studio and other one is unlicensed like Reborn Studio, EX and H2 Custom Electrical Studios. But for the new ZBrush artists, the unlicensed market is quite good as unlicensed studios tend to hire a new artist to make a statue to make cost effective whereas licensed studio hire experienced and mature artists non-industry as they are backed by the Marvel Studio, DC Studio or Copyrighted Studio. So, to make these statues for Prime One Studio, you who have a strong portfolio and get experience by working these online session studio. As a 3D artist, I feel that the artists have more value in this field as well. For example, as you work in game or movie, there are around 300 to 500 artists uh, which work collectively. Most people do not know that you work in that particular game, game except your colleagues and friends. But it is a quite a great feeling to, to see your uh, name right there despite all the credits at the end of the game and movie. But in the collectible industry, you are the sculptor. You made the whole piece and all major collectibles company stamp the name of the sculptor painter and other artists involved in that particular model on the front of the box, art box or at the bottom of the model. So it's a quite great feeling to see your name on that particular piece. Sometimes artists became so famous that collectors start recognize them and will purchase some products just by their name. There are some great artists like Romain Chopla, Sumit Malhotra, Martin Agusta, Martin Kinale, Rafael Grasati, Daniel Bell, and many more. I like to work for statue because these are timeless. By this, I mean for example, you played the game in 1990s that you like the most but you don't want to play that game now. Because there are many games with higher graphics and better storytelling experience right now. But in this case of statues, as the time passes, the value of statue increases as they became rare due to limited number of copies and available to people. And some people keep their statue for up to 20 to 30 years in their personal collections. The more interesting fact is that in game, you are assigned to a particular very limited part of character. But in the collectible industry, you have to make the whole piece which consists of weapon, creature, cloth, vehicles, multiples, characters and sometimes the company is humbled to make alteration to the concept to make it more uh, epic. But in the games and movies, you, are you have to strictly follow the concept art given by the other department. Some company also allow the artists to bring their own concept art for that particular character they want to make. So this is all the information I want to share with you before diving into this full flesh 3D character printing program. So make sure you subscribe to my channel and watch my further videos. Thank you.